Can I ask you for help solving this? Sure, let's have a look. Right here, we are going to prove that this function is injective, which is the same as saying the function is one-to-one. -one. And at first, you might be wondering, how can this function be one-to-one? -one? Because we have x squared, right? Well, I will tell you. Thanks to the square root, and also we have a plus x on the outside, it turns out to be is indeed one-to-one. -one. And you can take a look at the picture first. But of course, proof by looking at the picture is never enough. So we're going to see how to do it by using the definition. So firstly though, let's review what one-to-one -one means. I will say f is one-to-one, -one. just put it like this, one-to-one, -one, which is the same as injective. This means if the outputs are the same, then the inputs have to be the same. So we will just write if f of some number a being equal to f of some other number b, then we need to have a is equal to b. And then right here, a and b have to be in domain of the function. Right here, let's take a look. The domain of this function it's in fact all real numbers thanks to the square right here, even though we have square root, but you can actually have negative x, negative 4 for x, so yeah. All right, here we go. P, F for the proof. To start, we are going to say let A and B be in the domain of the function, which is just the set of real numbers here. And then we are going to begin by saying assume this right here, f of a is equal to f of b. Once we have this, later on we'll do some algebra, and hopefully at the end we can show that a is equal to b. If we can achieve that, then we are done. So, what does this mean? Well, we just have to put a into all the x's. So that means we have the equation a plus square root of a squared plus 7 make that equal to this, which is put b into all the x's, so b plus square root of b squared plus 7. Now, we have this equation to work with, it's kind of weird because like, what do we do? It's actually not so bad, we just have to move turns around and square both sides, cancel things out, it works actually very well. Let me show you. I'm not going to square both sides like this. I'm going to move things around first. I'm going to put b to the other side and put this turn to the other side. So we get, I'm not going to draw the arrows anymore, but just keep that in mind, all implications, and then, yeah, anyways. So subtract b to both sides, and then put that to the other. So we have this, minus square root of a squared plus 7. And then I will square both sides, because I want to get rid of the square root. On the left-hand side, if I expand it, that's a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. On the right-hand side, if we expand it, we square the first term, which is just inside. Minus 2 times this and that, so 2 square root. Here's the deal. The inside here is always positive because we have b squared, right, and then plus 7. Likewise, this is always positive. So I can put the insides inside multiply. So I will just write, let me write down the a squared plus 7 first, and then b squared plus 7. And then right here at the end, we add this thing squared, which is a squared plus 7. Now, notice we have a squared on both sides, so it can, cancel, and then b squared on both sides, they also cancel. It's nice. 7 plus 7, which is 14, we cannot cancel that, but we can put it to the other side. So that is negative 2ab minus 14, and that's equal to this. Negative 2, square root of a squared plus 7, and then times b squared plus 7. And I'm just going to divide both sides by negative 2. So I will divide it by negative 2. That's slightly easier this way. It's not needed, I'll tell you. Reduce that, we get positive ab. Reduce that, we get plus 7. That is equal to square root of a squared plus 7, and then b squared plus 7. Now it looks like we have no choice but to square both sides again, so we will do that. 
Furthermore, it looks like I have no choice but erase the board, so I will do that too. So, just kind of go back here. When we expand this, we square the first term, we get a squared, b squared, and then we add 2 times this and that. That will be 14, and then ab, and then we add 7 squared, which is 49. Now for this, I can store the square with the square root. I will just have to expand the inside too, right? So, a squared times b squared, that is a squared, b squared, and then continue. This times that is plus 7a squared, and then plus 7b squared, and lastly, plus 49. Have a look. This is so nice. a squared, b squared, on both sides, they, they cancel. 49, 49, they also cancel. Now what else is best? This, subtract it to. You know what else is nice? Look at this. This is 14ab, and here we have 7a squared and b squared. Let me subtract 14ab to both sides. So the left hand side is now 0, and then we have 7a squared minus 14ab, and then plus 7b squared. Now, if you look at this, Yes, we can factor out the 7. This is so nice. And then a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Can we factor this? Yes. If we factor it, we get a minus b times a minus b. So that's a minus b squared. And then divide 7 to both sides. So we get a minus b squared is equal to 0. And of course, this means that a minus b is equal to zero. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, after we add the a to both sides, we get a is equal to b. And as we can see, once we have this assumption, after all the algebra, we end up with a is equal to b. That is exactly what we need to show a function is one to one. So well done. Put box, shade in. That's it.